Well, hello and welcome to Gaming with Vindicator, where we're building the city of Michaelsfjord. And you know what? We've been taking a lot of time to get the downtown right. I think we're going to leave it there. And uh, last episode, we started to move into our, I guess you could call this midtown. And so we've been tapering down the height uh, over a little bit. And now we've put in this beautiful stadium here, Arrow Park. I got to say, this is probably one of the most beautiful assets in the game is certainly one of the largest if not the largest and uh, we've created a little community around this now there's no real housing in here it's simply um, you know it's a transit hub we've got our our trains our trams our metro and our buses here we've got another metro station for a cross line metro and we've got the uh, intercity bus terminal over here and all of this is sort of centered on this little park plaza here which is a leisure area for I guess people to go get drunk after they watch a baseball game so um, good times we're, we're building a city that really serves the needs of the people um, but you know what we we're approaching this strategically and the whole reason for building in this area was a it's perfect land it's prime for development but B um, over here in the farmland, in Ostrup farmland, we've been having a lot of trouble with finding enough workers and it's leading to these problems of um, not enough raw materials. My theory is that there's just not enough workers to actually cart around the materials that are needed. Uh, we have plenty of these barns and silos, the freight trucks are all in use, uh, the, the crops are almost always full, so I'm not really sure why that these are screaming for more materials, except that perhaps we don't have enough workers. So look at this, 1800 workers out of two, uh, almost 2600 jobs to fill. So we're short 800 workers, that's not good. So what we're going to do today in this episode is create two new residential neighborhoods. We're gonna create one over here, which would be more of a high rise, but not, not the full uh, high rises. We're gonna do a high rise ban so that we're continuing to taper down the height from the downtown. And then over here, we're gonna use our new-ish Brooklyn and Queens pack, and we're gonna put some uh, blue collar, kind of post-war, uh, you know, good jobs for the, the farmland housing. And so we're gonna see what happens at the end of this episode. So we're gonna take a screenshot of this so that we know we had about um, 1,800 workers and a shortage of 800. And we're gonna see how we do by the end of this episode, see if we can fill some of those jobs and uh, you know, keep pushing our, our population past 100,000. We'll see how, we get in the, how far we get in the next few months before City Skylines 2 comes out. All right, but of course, as with all episodes of mine, we got to start with a few tweaks. So we're looking at our water right now, and we fixed some water availability issues last episode, but we're, we're, run, we're teetering on the edge of the sewage treatment um, uh, bar here. So let's go back into our, you know, very ugly kind of looking water treatment area, and let's adjust the road layout here and put in a couple new of these eco-advanced inland water treatment plants. Beautiful, so we were able to fit in two more. I'll have to connect these, and unfortunately I've made a bit of a dead zone with the land here, but uh, we'll, we'll eventually take all of this, rip it up, and put it into a nice, beautiful, well-designed area for water treatment. That's another day. Let's fix the pipes. So that brings our sewage treatment capacity way up. We shouldn't have to mess with this for a few more episodes. Uh, let's take a look at what's next on the list. While I'm over here, I have been scouring my city and while we have many, many, many post offices and I've been keeping up with the, the well, <laughs> trying to keep up with the demand. You can see a lot of red areas over here, but we do have, you know, about a dozen or more post offices, but we don't have a single post sorting facility. And I've been Googling this building and the, and the postal service mechanics in general and it's not really clear what this building does. However, when you post them down, it does, no, no pun intended, it does start to generate a lot of activity. So, you know what, I'd like to get some in, uh, just to ensure that we're covering the whole city with all of the amenities that we want. And let's think about where we want these. Now I'm told that they generate a lot of traffic, so you want them kind of near highways because they are for bringing uh, mail in and out. And so let's find spots um, near the highway junctions that would make sense for um, putting these postal sorting facilities. So 
So I've reconfigured this a little bit, just uh, attempting to not put anything that generates a lot of traffic like a post sorting facility onto a very busy road like this one over here. And then also to keep the recycling center away from this uh, main collector or arterial here because I'm gonna put in residential over here. So don't wanna poison uh, the groundwater. What else can we do here? Well, let's put one more post sorting facility on the other side of the map. All right, so we're gonna keep an eye on these to see if these are actually functioning and if maybe they're actually increasing the efficiency of our smaller post offices. I'm, I'm not sure, there's, there's just not enough uh, information on Google for my liking. So we're gonna do our own experiment and we're gonna see how it goes and maybe check in with that at the end of the episode. All right, three post sorting offices, I think we're gonna leave it there. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to do is add a few little park uh, assets to this Harstad Park here. Uh, I did forget to put in a few things, but let's change that and see if we can at least get this to level two. All right, so at least we have enough entertainment to get us to the next level. This is not intended to be a five-star park, obviously. Um, really, it's intended to be more of like a beer garden where people can you know, grab their drinks from the Flex Gym or the Comedy Club or the bowling alley and you know hang out and, and uh, revel together in the park so uh, you know I'm kind of trying to create a little area I saw in, in Pretoria South Africa that I, I went and had a beer in once so um, you know just small little things like this are, are adding to our, our city and of course we'll come back and we'll do a ton of detailing with trees and whatnot here uh, but for now I want to adjust some some roads a little bit this junction is a, is a blood red and we got a maybe give them a few more lanes to uh, to fly around. I'm gonna choose a non-industrial road because the only four lane road that we have is a, is a standard road, but I will upgrade this. I thought about maybe a, just a two lane, but then, you know, unfortunately we're getting left turn lanes here. This is not the intent of this slip lane. The intent is that people can go um, to this direction, down here even, or up, but not to, to do a U-turn U and go back into the roundabout. Um, so, you know what, we'll just leave it as, as is. We've got now two lanes to go right. I'm hoping that it will um, ease things up a little bit. And then I want to rethink this junction as well. This is a little bit crazy. And the reason I think it's getting so bogged up, and you can see people doing crazy things like coming down this slip lane and going across, they're really just skipping the, the roundabout queue. Um, but I, I'm not sure how well this is actually functioning. And the fact that we have one, two, three, four, five, six junctions essentially means that this light has to cycle a number of times, two more times than it would if we didn't have these slip lanes. So we're gonna rethink the whole thing and I'll, I'll just show you what I mean and I'm gonna pause it. Just checking the height here, I think it works fine. And now what we have is, we have a slip lane on this side and it's allowing cars to bypass the roundabout, bypass this whole intersection here, uh, which I think is a good thing uh, because there will be a lot of traffic that will wanna go sort of into this part of the, uh, the, the farmland. And so they don't need to go through this junction or the roundabout, which is pretty, pretty red. Um, the other thing is, having all these trucks come down here and then slip lane into this junction was bl blocking that up. Not a good thing either. So we'll just give them a little bit of relief to go get onto the highway without going through the roundabout in that junction. And I'm gonna see how this performs. And we've also freed up a bunch more usable land if we want it in here uh, someday. And I'll just adjust some of the lanes and we'll see how this functions now. So now two lanes is going into four, going down to three and one, and we're, we're respecting our lane mathematics. And I think we're gonna find that all of this back up here is gonna clear. I think this junction is gonna be a little, much less nutso. And I think without these backups here, the roundabout will clear. It's gonna be a, a, a positive dominoes falling situation all across the, uh, the region. And so uh, we'll have to let that run for a little bit. Checking our lights is always a good thing to do because we don't want lights where they don't belong. Um, this is fine, this is fine. And I'm not sure, we might actually just let this flow because currently I just don't know if there's a reason. We might put a stop sign there, but so far so good. Um, 
Hmm, we might want some lights here at some point, but I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, we're, we're just slowly turning this red back to green. And one other method for doing that, um, I'm looking at this train station, which we upgraded last episode with um, the, the double track from the airport um, the DLC. Now it's, it's performing much better than the single track one. And it's not perfect, you can see there's still trains backing up, but not too many. And it's much better than it was. And now, part of the reason for that is, you know, there's two, uh, well, there's four tracks, but the trucks can actually get in quicker uh, as well. So they're not backing up onto this, um, this area here. But we can actually make this a little bit more efficient by taking a couple more roads, lining them up with uh, this, where the trucks are coming in here. I want uh, a road coming straight off and we're gonna have problems with our nodes, so I'm gonna have to delete this, back it off. And we'll do another one coming off of the exit. And of course, I've gotta reverse this one. So now we're taking some pressure off this, and we're also hopefully maybe giving ourselves a few more microseconds of, of uh, efficiency with the trucks being able to come out straight onto this road and coming into the um, cargo terminal straight from this road instead of having to go all the way through the region and, and, and try to um, come up uh, from this side. So let's see how that performs. And you know what, while we're at this, um, I do want to, I want to keep going with what's working. So what's working is this double laned, double tracked um, cargo terminal. I want to do the same thing up here. I can guess that this is going to be a problem at some point. Um, we're going to be adding a lot of people in here and this cargo terminal is serving you know pretty much all of Fialison and for some reason dropping things off up here in Tromso and, and farther afield um, and I think it's going to get a lot more busy uh, as we go. So why not future proof? We're going to pause it, we're going to take all of this out and we're going to rethink it. Of course, I'm obsessed with getting those tracks as level or as smooth as possible. It's not perfect, but it sure is good. So we're gonna move on. Well, I think she's a beauty, and I think we can run this, but I'm just gonna do a final check of everything. I decided to take the this road out from going directly into the roundabout. I don't think it's absolutely necessary, and it was getting in the way of my train tracks, so you're in my way, you gotta move. So here we go, I think this is looking good, and let's run at top speed, because we need to make some money, and we are making money, but over time, we've been definitely uh, emptying our budget. So let's look at our treasury. Yeah, from a peak of, uh, what is that? Almost 12 million um, back in the day. This is probably before I even started recording this game. Um, we've, we've spent a lot of money, right? And um, that's probably because I keep running it on slowest speed and I don't really let it sit and run. And so um, we're, we're banking back up. We are making money um, despite the fact that I think our it looks sometimes like we're losing money. The industries are pumping a lot of cash into our coffers. So um, I can see trucks waiting here. Uh, I don't think we need a light there or there. We're just gonna let things flow as they should. And we will see this clear. I'm confident about that. Um, we're running at a top speed. Trains are moving. Trains are not really getting stuck at all. That's what we're going for, right? And we'll just rename this. I love renaming these so that I, when I click on a train, it tells you exactly where they're going. And so, Ostrich 2 is just fine. Okay, what's next? And while we're at this, let's do the same sort of in and out lane trickery that we did with the, the last station. We're obviously gonna take out this power line, but I don't think it actually matters. 
and we're gonna increase our capacity. This road's a bit too close, let's fix it. All right, we're gonna see how that functions. I have a feeling it's gonna do very, very well. And connect the power here. And of course, while we're adjusting our road network, I'm seeing already a little bit of a backup here, which is totally unacceptable because we're not even really, there's nobody really living in this area. So it's, it's too much of a bottleneck. We're gonna fix this a little bit and we'll do a bit of a lane math here. So I've added double lanes for both sides, just for good measure. And I wanna also check this, this slip lane or this off ramp is not being used terribly much. Um, I do see people doing funny things like um, coming down, exiting here, and then turning around and going in back into the, yeah, like that, uh, right there. So they're coming off this um, right hand side and they're going across. Instead of taking the, the beautiful lane, this is, hey guys, this is a custom interchange that I made back in the day and uh, they're not really using it. So one way I think I can fix that is convert the lane in the middle to a slower road. So we're gonna go back to our four lanes or, or rather our two unit roads. We're gonna find our four lane. And at this stage in the city skylines evolution, there's so many roads just in the vanilla game that it's hard to find what you're looking for sometimes. Um, I know there's a mod to show you roads a little bit easier, but hey, that's okay. Um, okay, so what we've done is we've reduced the speed here uh, from, you know, these roads are I think 60 kilometers an hour, whereas the highway was 100. I think what that would do is make the this um, uh, exit lane a little bit more attractive now to trucks and they won't do some funny stuff like this bus is doing, like turn right around. That nonsense should stop, but we'll keep an eye on it and we'll also keep an eye on the junctions. Um, I've added a stop sign there on purpose. Yes, a stop sign at roundabout is very funny, but um, there's less traffic on this side. There's more traffic building up on this side and I want this to clear. If I see this getting wonky as it's doing now, you know what, maybe we'll just, we'll just let it flow. All right, good. Um, another thing I've noticed is there's this lonely fire watch tower here. I wanna make sure that it's covering all the appropriate uh, uh, what do you call it, the, um, the, the trees. Uh, it's not in a bad spot, but it does have to move because we're going to be putting in a lot of residential here. I wonder, can we, yes, we can sneak it behind here and in some dead land. And I think that's going to work to protect this area from fires because when I did my test build, we had the most raging giant fire I've ever seen in my existence. And so this whole area was on fire. The buildings in here were catching. We had 25 fire engineers in use. I really wish I'd recorded that, but uh, we're not gonna have any fires today, right? Okay, that's all of our fixes done. And now we're gonna start getting in our residential zones. And there, as I said, there will be two. And so I'll paint those up now. Beautiful, so these names cannot stand. We're going to rename this one. So, Jordbruksland, which uh, translates, I believe, from Norwegian to agricultural land. And hey, doesn't that make sense for being next to a farm? I'm so clever. And uh, yeah, my, my Norwegian is as good as Google Translate. So if you think that's a mistake, let me know. We're gonna go into the policies here and we're going to do schools out. The whole purpose of these Residential areas is to create workers for the farm, right? I mean, obviously to play the game too, but we wanna, we wanna get some workers in these farms here and, and we don't wanna have an 800 uh, empty jobs. So schools out is a policy that, that really encourages people who live here to go to work instead of getting educated. Um, you know, it's, it's a terrible thought in, in real life, but um, it is uh, not a bad idea here. So, uh, and we've lost our name. Good, and any other policies? Yes, we want to get the high-rise ban on um, for no particular reason except that I don't want the very, very tallest buildings spawning here. What this does is, in reality, is it uh, restricts buildings from leveling up to level four. They can get as far as um, 4.9999 or 9999, uh, but they cannot go to level five. So that's uh, gonna, gonna give us some shorter buildings, which is nice because we're this is Midtown. Okay, and the next one we're gonna call Vaxjo. And this is gonna be a little bit more of our 
uh, our blue collar neighborhood. And we're gonna show that by using the Brooklyn and Queens. If you haven't seen it yet, it, fantastic residential high density assets. They're all these like uh, brick, brown looking, you know, very serious looking Soviet almost buildings. And we don't need a high rise band because they don't get tall, uh, but we do want the schools out policy so that we have more workers for the farmland. And I think that's all we're gonna do for policies. All right, now um, we've, we've painted those districts. We've given them the policies that we want. And the only thing next is to really get the, the road layout going. So I'm gonna start on the south side and we'll just see how, how creative we can get with it. All right, that looks like a decently decent layout for a residential area. And I think we'll just get some water under the roads and some other services in the area. I'm definitely seeing an opportunity to get a subway line in here. Unfortunately, it means we have to move this line, this tunnel a little bit, but it's totally worth it to get another uh, station that can serve this area here and let's uh, pause and we'll, we'll just jig, rejig that. All right, so we've added a couple stops here. We've got a little bit more uh, passenger capacity on this side and let's get, uh, I think, you know, maybe a bit of health care action would be lovely here. And, you know, in this neighborhood, I'm not gonna put a major hospital that's going to the other side but i think a community pool uh, i'll squeeze it in right there that would do us well and i also want to get in a post office on this side and maybe some death care yeah that's pretty great uh, what i'm trying to do is not um, ruin my square zoning too much so i'm putting things where I, i'm thinking that it's not going to be a problem uh, but i do need to adjust a little bit of zoning we won't don't want um, for example over here any zoning and i think probably same deal on this side I'm trying to make this very square i won't touch well maybe i'll touch this on one side I'm trying to make it square because the brooklyn and queens uh or, or no i guess i'm not doing brooklyn and queens on this side am i uh, but still i kind of want to get uh, a little bit of uh, order going here so we'll take that out uh, we might even take this one out we are losing a little bit of zoning on that road but that's okay with me and this one here also does not need any zoning on it and uh yeah that looks good i think are we just about where we can start zoning? I think we can. Let's get in some residential and we'll even do a little bit of commercial. I think we can go high density. We've given ourselves a high rise band so they won't get too tall. Um, or does that, does that seem crazy? It does seem a little bit crazy to put high density residential on, uh, next to a farmland. So let's go low density along the, uh, the corridor here. And I think maybe even on this side, we'll do a little bit. Or, you know what let's see how our demand shakes down but let's get this filled up with residential all right so we've given ourselves a lot of new housing coming in it will take a long time for these buildings to level up the reason being is we haven't put any schools in this area as you've noticed and so they're gonna be saying oh we don't have enough uh, education uh, by the time they, they're ready to level up. Um, they still will, they'll still level up when, when educated people move in, but we don't want to generate educated people because again, we're trying to fill up the jobs over here. And we'll look at that at the end, I'll restrain myself. I want to put in a bus line and we're gonna come over here and go start this from our, this is our first one I guess in this depot. Uh, let's start it from over here. And I want them to come down and maybe make a stop uh, in front of the, uh, out of town bus station, you know, another one perhaps, uh, in front of the subway. 
one more before we leave this neighborhood. And then I want to come all the way down and pop out uh, in Central Park over here. And then right in front of the Financial District subway. And we'll even, we have to turn around and right turns are best. So we might even come up as far as here, put a stop over there. That will also add connectivity to this road and this uh, subway stop. And then we'll pop out on the other side and we'll just do this back and forth in a loop. And I'm thinking this is probably going to be a fairly busy bus line because it is going from one transit hub to another quasi-transit hub. So we'll go in and find that line and we'll call it stadium to financial. And you know what, we're gonna give this uh, a little higher capacity because I'm anticipating that, that busyness. And we'll do the articulated biofuel, which is 75 per bus and we'll make it a different color. Nice dark green suits me just fine. Kind of the, the color of American money, so perfect. Um, okay, what's next? I think we're done with Yordbrook's land. We're gonna let that fill in and we're gonna come on the north side here. And we're gonna start doing a little bit of road layout here. This is a bit trickier. And it's gonna get a little more interesting. So let's just get to it. That's a pretty spectacular road layout. I've tried to maintain as many square blocks as I can so these Brooklyn and Queens buildings come in nice and nice and tight. Um, what else do we need? You know, while we're at this, let's get in some bike capacity. Uh, I love having bike lanes in every neighborhood and we're trying to connect those all up to each other. So, here we go. And you can see here the effect of our schools out policy. We are not attracting any new students to our, our uh, university. So that's good, that's what we want. We had a, way too many and we're, we're not gonna stand for it anymore. So we've actually, I believe, connected this Yordbrooksland neighborhood in Baxjo to uh, the other side of the, uh, the downtown, I guess, and done it through this this road here now I'm not actually sure if I made those roads bike lane roads so let's just double check that now you see this is the first for me I've never actually tried to make bike lanes go on a road that's a tunnel and so I'm not actually sure if that will function properly um, we're gonna keep an eye on it and I think regardless we're probably gonna put in some other kind of bike facility slash pedestrian overpass here. In fact, yeah, we're gonna do that right now. And I was hoping I could sneak one in without demolishing a building. I did, which is fantastic. And hopefully we can just come right across the highway now without breaking a fence. Beautiful, and we can come off of this area and hopefully also not demolish any buildings. We gotta get these road guidelines off here. Um, you know what, let's just turn everything off right now. And we'll sneak this, this direction. Um, yeah, and you know, I wonder if I put road guidelines on, can I, yeah, I can actually get the road guideline. And we'll make this a little bit square, make a nice long uh, path here, a nice smooth transition. And we'll get a little bit of um, people walking and biking across. We've we're actually connecting the bike lanes by another way, so people can come off this bike lane, get into the park, take the path, but ah, we don't have a crossing here. So let's just do our vanilla crossings, which means that um, we just need to pick any other type of road. Let's do medium road with trees. And you know what, we were lucky we have a, a node right there. People are able to cross right into our, uh, our new overpass going right over the trains. And uh, yeah, into the city, up to the bike lanes. Beautiful, love it. And we'll keep an eye on whether the buses are, are uh, blocking this road, but I think we should be fine. Okay, we lost a little bit of zoning here. Um, I think maybe when I 
Ah, yeah, when I upgraded this bike lane, I accidentally uh, left the zoning on. And I wonder, is the post office still able to function, even though there's no zoning on that side? Uh, it's not complaining, so we're gonna leave it. And we'll try to clean the zoning up again. All right, I feel good about this, and yeah, I you know while we're putting in pedestrian crossings, I missed one last episode, and I think there's a major, major uh, opportunity for a crossing here uh, to get from Fjallison and all this residential over to the stadium without having to go all the way across town on a train. So uh, let's get people walking, and let's go underground. Let's say from here and see if I if I demolish anything or not. Uh, it would be a very long and expensive tunnel, but it's going to let us save a lot of car trips and get people walking. And you know what? We've also noticed a chance to fix up some of this nonsense here and put in a few more buildings of the residential kind. Eh, I don't think we want to get too close. That's not a nice house either. Okay. Um, yeah, we've done that. And I think we're going to start now putting in some amenities getting in uh, our services and making this look amazing. Well, I had a bit of a happy clicker finger, but uh, I think I've, I've fixed it there. I've put bus lanes and, and a median in this area because I want this to look like a really cool downtown strip. And also I know we're gonna, I'm gonna put a bus lane down here and it's gonna come down this road as well. So we might as well give ourselves a bus lane there too. And I'm checking the traffic, it's not severe. I think we can probably get away with, you know, something like a six lane bus lane road. Hopefully we can get trees on that one as well. Is it possible? Let's see. Yeah, a six lane road with median trees and bus lanes. Okay, you, you've, you've sold me, let's do it. Really cool. I don't think I've ever used this road before, but it's it's kind of beautiful. I love it. And you can see we're hurting for some fire coverage, so let's see where it makes sense to get in one of these guys. Police and fire next to each other. I like it. I like it. And you know what I'm thinking? This is this is a really cool community, just like the real Brooklyn and Queens. You know, there's a lot happening there. There's a there's a great nightlife. I'm totally making this up, but I, I think that's what there is there. And um, we're gonna go into our some of our uh, unique buildings. We're gonna find the concerts tab, and we're gonna look for there it is the music club. And I think because there's a little bit of a non-zoning area there. Uh, we should be able to sneak this in. Uh, well, don't, don't need to go too too close to the police station. Uh, police and nightclubs don't really go together. They're they're sort of like uh, oil and water. But I love this building, man. Oh my god, it looks like such an old warehouse type thing, like an 1800s type of I don't know, a brewery or a tannery or a cannery or whatever the heck they they used back then. And look at the facade. That is gorgeous with the columns and the Art Deco stuff. I'm not an architect, I have no idea what I'm talking about, but those palm trees are really cool. And, um, you know, I think it fits. This is a very, very big community for music. You know, a lot of great music, especially rock, came out of um, working class neighborhoods. People picking up a guitar and a bass and playing the drums and doing some amazing stuff with it. So um, let's keep putting in our services. Let's make it a, a really livable community here. And I almost forgot, but this community definitely needs a subway. And why is that? Because everyone gets a subway. This is this is how we roll. So I'm trying to find a spot that's going to adequately cover this area without putting me too close to this guy. Um, what I like to do is take my road, any old road, go into the curved road mode, and hit the the center of the subway station and count. You know, when you have this this type of curve road thing and you put on road guideline, uh, sorry, road length, uh, take that off. You'll actually get these little bars, one, two, three, four, five, and that represents 50 units. So we could go put one here. Um, I'm not sure how that's gonna work with the underground track to, and curving, but um, that would be kind of the middle. I think we'll just give it a little bit more space over here and connect her up. 
It's a fairly smooth connection. And now we will take this stop, we'll drag it over here. We keep extending our subway line in a very, uh, I, I think, reasonable way. Oh, what happened? I, I've added the lines. Great, we're back in business. People can get back to the stadium. Um, they're screaming for water though, let's fix that. It's looking watery, I like it. And what else did I miss? Let's see. I almost missed the crematorium, which uh, you know, in this game can be actually deadly for your city. So I wanna find a spot where I'm not gonna use up too many good tiles, because uh, I like to get as many of those square buildings as possible. I don't want it to be on a main road. And there's just no no spot I love. Oh, this is still do fine. And we've got some coverage. Okay. Let's get some bus action in here. And again, we're gonna start from the depot. Yep, looks good to me. A nice simple circular route, and we'll do the same thing going the opposite direction. All right, we'll see how those buses fare, but what I wanna do is be environmentally friendly. And so we're gonna go check those lines out. Uh, we're gonna give them a biofuel. And given the very um, short nature of this line, I think uh, the 30 capacity will be just fine. Uh, we'll give this a different color though. Close enough. And we're gonna call this Vax show A and B, and we'll see how they go. Now, I also know that there's probably only two biofuel bus depots in the whole city. And so let's see, let's pick up a biofuel bus depot. Um, there's there's one over here in Ibiza Ford, or rather uh, Hummelvik, and I think there's one in this industrial zone, and that's serving pretty much the whole city. Uh, not good, friends, not good. So. I wonder if we don't throw one up here in Torrance Square, up in this, uh, uh, wherever we can. I don't wanna to be too much on the hill, but there there seems fine. Um, and hopefully that will be enough. You know what? We don't need landfills. Let's take it out. And we'll just make some more usable land. We'll actually, while we're here, check if I didn't take away too much death care capacity. I think we're gonna be just fine with all of those. All right, very cool. Any other services we need to add here? Um, you know what, I'm gonna do one more bus line just because we have this beautiful brand new bus depot. And we'll come over here. And um, you know, I, I thought about maybe extending the tram line over here through the, uh, the farmland, but that just doesn't make sense. It's not a high density area. And that's really what trams are for. One more here and we'll park it right in the the Torrance Square giant, way too much capacity bus stop. And we'll just come right back and do the, the same ping back and forth. All right, um, and you know what? We'll do also biofuel here and change the color. Very good, so we're gonna see how it works as always. We just, we test and we check. Is there anything else we wanna add? Um, hey, how about some zoning, guy? Yeah, let's do the zoning on this uh, in this beautiful new neighborhood. And um, high density, low density, I think, you know what, we're just gonna do a little bit of high density. I don't wanna overdo this. Maybe, you know, we have a little bit around the subway because that would make sense. Um, just on the one side and maybe as far as here. Yeah, so we're satisfying just the, the little bit of commercial demand here. I think on this quarter or two, this has gotta be commercial, but we're gonna do low density uh, because it's next to a farmland. Why, you, you're not gonna wanna see tall towers fronting a cargo station, that's just ridiculous. But, you know, hey, uh, a, a laundromat, a, uh, a convenience store, sure. And, and you know what, we'll also fill in a little bit over here and uh, give people their shopping. You know, we're gonna actually take the zoning off this road. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Let's find out that road and we'll change it. Cool, 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 I like that. I think um, we'll also put in some commercial around the station here because obviously that is a gigantic source of noise. Um, get a few more little bits in here. 
Uh, we don't need that power line anymore, I don't believe. A little bit more entertainment, even, you know, wherever we can. Uh, would that be? Yeah, it's fine. And uh, the rest, the rest is gonna be residential, yes? Yes. And you know, I'm looking at this little road, I'm, I'm being really particular about this and probably don't need to be, but I, I'm guessing there's not a lot of actual traffic being used here. You're seeing um, buses for sure, a truck for whatever reason doing a, a, a round the block thing here, and a service vehicle. So, you know what, we're just gonna convert this to a bus lane. Again, first time I've used this uh, type of road as well, so that's cool. There's a lot of buses uh, shifting around here. We're gonna dedicate that. How's this line doing? This is the Stadium 2 Financial. Ah, uh, yeah, it's being used. There's definitely some activity. Um, you know, yet, not yet, is it very busy, but um, as these buildings start to come in, and by the way, look at these assets. Are these not really cool? I mean, they're not objectively, you know, the most beautiful architecture, but someone did a really excellent job of making them look great in City Skylines, so I'm really, 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 really impressed. I love that. Um, let's, keep, let's keep letting this area grow and grow and grow. And you know, while we let this fill in, it's, uh, it's detailing time. Let's change the trees out on some of these rows and let's put in some more beautiful things. Like, I, I went ahead and I fixed this roundabout off camera, but um, you know, this, this area needs some love. So we're gonna do a little bit of uh, speed detailing. Here we go. I was getting just a little tired of the regular pines that I've been using on the larger uh, four unit roads. So, I, you know, I went and I found these silver birches from the OG game. I think they look really great. And I think it adds a little bit of character to a neighborhood that is uh, very unique in its own right. And, but I think we're still gonna stick with the young linens for the smaller roads. Now, isn't that interesting? So we've got all of these Bands, where, where are they? Um, they're, they're lining up to get to a point on the other side of the map. Oh, they're actually dropping things off in the train station. I did not expect that whatsoever. I did not expect um, them to be dropping bags of money. <laughs> I thought their function was simply to, uh, to, to collect local deliveries, but wow, okay. There's a ton of usage here and I wonder, hmm, that's, that's very curious to me. Um, and speaking of banks, I think I did forget one in this area. Yeah, we've got a little bit of a, a missed opportunity here. So let's see where a bank might fit. Just right across the street, a nice community bank. And back to my detailing. And look at that, we have a full stadium here. We've got a game going, we, uh, we won one. Hey, look at that, that's amazing. And you know, I don't know how much more detailing I'm gonna do. Uh, I've done a lot of trees, you know, maybe one more variety of tree. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, the demand here and actually our commercial is slightly higher than, than residential right now. Do I wanna put in a little more commercial? I think we're going to leave it alone and not touch it. Let's see how it's going with our new uh, neighborhood connections. We've got, ooh, yeah, a lot of traffic, uh, especially bikers, it seems, uh, going down here and spreading out to all parts of this neighborhood. 
and coming from as far as, uh, as the, the junction here, the crematorium apparently. And we had our other crossing, where was that? We don't need to be underground anymore. Anyway, so we've got this pavement path here, the bridge we put up, it's being used as well. Um, people coming from all the way down at the waterfront, which is really cool, and heading all the way up north into uh, the transit hub here, so really cool. Um, are they using our bike lanes? Uh, they are indeed. Uh, let's let's turn everything off and just look for, for cyclists and pedestrians right now. Um, definitely some things happening there. Oh, lots of biking on this area. They're using that, that cross. I wonder, are they going underground? They're not. So I wonder if then it's possible that bikers just don't use tunnels. Or maybe they do, but they don't prefer it, so they, they'll use this path instead. I don't know. But um, it's it's interesting to play with this stuff. Um, what else did we want to check? We want let's go check our postal. Uh, what do you call these things? And where did I put it? Uh, this is a post sorting facility, and you can see, holy yeah, tra this is a bad place for this because it's waiting for trains, and we're getting bogged up something fierce. So uh, I, I mm, yeah, where do I want to put this? Let's just move it a little bit away from the highway junction, but not too far. And by the way, how is it doing? Um, 250,000 of 550,000 unsorted mail, 15,000, not much in the way of sorted mail. I honestly don't understand quite how these function, but I'm gonna say that, that they're being utilized. So we've got one there. Where do we put the other ones? Uh, there was one, ah yes, back in Ostrup. Uh, also busy, but not that busy. Uh, being a little more efficient with the sorting of mail and then we had one last one up here and No, did we did we put one up here? We put one in the ah, yes in the uh, cargo airport area and this one's not very Not very busy. I guess 12 trucks. That's kind of busy. Okay, cool. And this guy. Yeah, park maintenance buildings maintaining away and last check I think we're gonna do is on our transit line so we're gonna come in and let's, you know, let's base this around our transit hub here. Wow, you can see we've got some bus action. Okay, this is now, I'm guessing this is over a thousand. 1290 passengers serviced last week. That's pretty cool. Um, lots of people waiting for buses. Let's take a look. What are those buses doing that we put in? So Vaxjo A, 75 and B, the one going the other way is only seven. I don't understand this game sometimes. 75 means um, we've got pass ups at this station right here, which we can see from just looking at the, the, the terminal. Um, how bad is it? It's not that bad. We might add one more bus. And the the other line B, I don't know. Wait, tell me why, please. Someone tell me why this is not being utilized. Zero car trip saves seven residents. I guess people just don't want to go in that direction. Okay. Um, is there anything I could do to fix it? I wonder. I wonder. But that's as far as my mind will go. It's just wondering. I don't know. And I'm not going to worry about it. We, we definitely have to have a back and forth route, so I'm not going to kill it. Um, what else did we create? We did Stadium Financial. 209. That is one of our most successful bus routes. Um, we're definitely seeing a lot of people at this transit hub. They're picking up more people uh, in front of... Oh, no, they're actually coming back into the transit hub. Um, buses are, they're not terribly, oh, what's this? Oh, that's this stop, interesting. And that's going, wait a minute, I'm confusing myself. Yeah, that one's going into the transit hub. This one is coming out of the transit hub. I wish I could move these menus, but I don't think I can, aside from moving my uh, screen around. Um, a lot of people waiting here. What? are they doing? Are they just lazy that they don't want to walk through my beautiful paid park to get to this? Okay, well, I don't know. But I don't want to move this bus stop down farther because it's going to start blocking traffic coming in here. So, uh, we'll call that a success. Do we need any other buses? Yeah, we're having pass ups. Um, these buses are not all full. I think this is going to level out, but I'm going to add two vehicles. Um, what other bus lines did we create? We created one going from 
losing track here. Um, one going from Stadium District. So we'll look alphabetically for S Stadium to Torrens. And how's that doing? 36 passengers, 100 car trips saved. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's doing something. It's not that busy. There's not a bus with more than six passengers. So we're gonna cut the capacity in half down to 50%. That's great. We're being responsible fiscal stewards here. I think that's it for our buses. Let's check. I wanna see how's our Arc Park line doing? It's still, I believe, yeah, oh yeah, by far, by a factor of 2.5, I think, uh, um, the most successful line that we have. It's also, I think, the longest, so it makes sense. Um, any pass ups? No, it's looking good. And, you know, I could probably even cut one or two, but I do know that on stadium game days, this gets bananas, so we're leaving it alone. Let's check our subways. Tropicana Express, what's the busiest one? It is now, it's still the east-west, but Tropicana is very close behind. That's the yellow line we've been working with this episode. Still, obviously, tons of people at Tropicana because uh, we have our ferry, which is not doing much, but we have our uh, cruise ship terminal here. So, um, you know, let's take a look. So we've got people being picked up here, no problem. Very dead along the line, it's looking like 13 passengers on that train. Not a particularly successful line, I would say, even though it's got a lot of volume of passengers. Um, any other stations that are busy? Uh, what is, what am I looking at? Oh, uh, Arc Park, okay. So people going down to Tropicana. Um, I, you know, honestly, I'm very, perplexed by this. I would have thought this station would have been just rolling in passengers. We have 12 this week. Um, is that because we have a quicker way in the trams to get around? Probably. Um, what to do about that? I don't know. I just think that this line will become more busy as we extend it out. Um, this station, obviously, you know, bananas. Let's see how the train is doing at this station and in general. Actually, let's check our east-west subway while we're doing that. See, how is this station that we put in front of our transit hub? Uh, let's see, uh, is it busy? What's this? That is, okay, that's our industrial area. Oh, we're surprisingly busy. And then we're popping over back this way, this way. Um, I wish you could name these stations. Okay, here it is, nobody waiting. 26 passengers inbound from, I think, the left side there. Um, nobody waiting. Okay, so nobody wants to leave this area. It's just too much fun. I built the most fun district in the history of City Skylines. Um, okay, I, I don't know why this is busier, to be honest, but that is fine. Um, can, I, can I click that? There we go, thank you. Uh, train, last thing. East-West line, this was, oh my gosh, 1,314 passengers. This we, last episode, um, converted a little bit more to a intercity uh, train line. So we, we gave intercity trains ability to go to this market station here. Um, we've got 230 waiting, that, that will be picked up, I'm pretty sure. Um, but you know, some of these trains are pretty busy and while they're not near capacity yet, I'm, I'm confident this is gonna grow. We've got, oh yeah, this is really, this really picks up fast, doesn't it? Um, these trains are dropping off a lot of passengers. I wonder if they're taking a lot away. Two passengers, not so much. One coming in here, this is our, what is this? This is our commuter, okay, so that's our line. Um, not, not as busy as I would have thought. I've seen it busier, but hey, Oh, they just went from, uh, it's fine. Okay, well, I've babbled enough. I think we're gonna leave it here. Uh, you tell me, how did this work out? I mean, these buildings, they're not quite leveled up yet. We know why, it's because we don't have any schools, or high schools, libraries in this area. Uh, it's just gonna take some time to level up. Um, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. How do we like this? How would we like to live right here? Is it kind of silly to have a football city in there? Nah, I've lived in a city where this happens. Um, and then the park right here, I think it makes for a nice little type of square. I don't 
you know, a lot of these buildings are showing their age. 2015 when City Skylines came out, and that is definitely an older model. We have so many more content creators making beautiful looking things, but they still hold up. Nearly 10 years later, it looks darn good in my opinion. So we're, we're doing well. I like that we use the, the old default buildings over here. I like that we've got the leisure buildings in the middle with the stadium, which is, you know, constantly busy, which I love. And then Brooklyn and Queens, first neighborhood using this pack in this series. Uh, looks pretty cool, I like it. It's not fully filled in yet, but it's coming. And we did give some, some really tall buildings and height for our commercial area. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see that as being a problem. It kind of makes sense to do that around a subway where you've got extra capacity. Our train lines, man. Um, yeah, we're, we're screwed. This is this is uh, quite the log jam. I might have to go old school and spend a few episodes fixing train traffic, but not today, not today. It's fine for today, I'm just not gonna look at it. Um, hardly, hardly gonna look at it. They're all coming in, okay. Well, you know what? I'm, I'm hoping that I'm just gonna use my rose colored glasses and say that's just because we've got a lot of people moving into the neighborhood. There you go, problem solved. Before we go, how do we do on Ostrup? We had 800, um, 800 vacancies and we still have about 800. So I'm perplexed, man, uh, just, just as perplexed as you are. How do we get people into these jobs? We, we just need more residential. And I think it's gonna sort itself out. I think we just need to let this run a little bit to simulate. Um, I think we are going to see a lot of these jobs getting filled. You know what, like people that moved into these neighborhoods, let's see if we can get some stats here. Yeah, still very, very much level one. So I believe when we get, we, when we level up, we have more and more and more people that are able to live here. I just think it's going to take some time, friends. It's going to take some time, which we have. We've got time. How's the traffic? Um, it's holding up. It's holding up. Do we like this? Yes, we like this a lot. The fixes we did at the beginning of this episode, doing well. I don't love that these guys are turning left there. That's not cool, guys. We'll give them another turning lane while we're at this. But yeah, it's uh, it's looking cool in my eyes. We've cleared that junction. This is really busy and uh, it's not surprising. There's a ton of transit options over here. So people are driving to transit, it seems. Look at all the people using the tunnels. Look at all the people just heading out to this bus station, they've, they've left the game, they're taking trains and buses and trams to get out of here. I love this so much, I love seeing people use what I've created, what we've created together, my friends. And um, it feels good. It feels good to move simulated humans around a fake city. It's very, very, very satisfying to me. Um, I, uh, I, I spend as much time as I can doing this, not just for, for my sake, but because you're following along. If you enjoyed what we're doing here today, then just click the like button and hit the notification bell so that you do get notifications about the, um, the next episode that I put out, which honestly, I don't know what that will be. I have no idea what's coming next, but uh, it, it will be a good one. We're not wasting any time on, on kind of like generic stuff. We're doing, we're doing grand things in this game and uh, we're gonna have a lot of fun with it. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day, night, morning, afternoon, lunchtime, wherever you are in the world. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Let me know where are you in the world. Just uh, hit a hit a quick comment in, in down below here, and uh, and let me know what's uh, what's up with you. So, thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.